Our gospel today is what they call a paradox. I checked the meaning in the dictionary and I found this definition. Paradox is a figure of speech in which a statement appears to contradict itself but is actually communicating an inherent truth. It means if you see only the contradiction, you do not yet see the truth that it is trying to state. Here is the paradox from the gospel today. Jesus says, the one who saves his life will lose it, while the one who loses his life will save it. The statement indeed seems to contradict itself because in normal language, you either save it or lose it. How can you lose it if you save it? And how can you save it if you lose it? What is Jesus trying to tell us here? Obviously, he is not using normal language, but what we call figurative language. He is actually explaining to them what it means to be his disciple. But he is also talking about the mystery of human life itself. Let us use a more ordinary analogy to get what Jesus means. For example, bread. Bread is meant to be broken and eaten if it is to serve its purpose. If you keep it, you lose it. Why? It is not meant to be kept. It will just spoil and rot after a few days. Now, if you lose it by consuming it, you have kept its purpose. Another example, a candle. The candle's purpose is to give light. If it does not give light, it does not fulfill its purpose. But if it is to give light, it has to be burned until it burns out. By burning out, it is able to keep its purpose of giving light. Jesus is saying basically the same thing about human life. It is not just bread that gets stale, you know. People too. How can we achieve our life's purpose if we live it only for ourselves? If we are unwilling to be broken and shared and consumed like bread? No wonder Jesus found bread most expressive of his own life's mission and purpose. And the words have been immortalized in the Eucharist. This is my body which will be given up for you. People are like candles too. In my younger activist days, I remember, I received a poster with the following saying, He who wishes to give light must endure burning. St. Paul says basically the same thing in Romans chapter 14, verse 7. For none of us lives for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. Jesus gives his disciples a new and a rather simplified commandment to love one another as he loves us. And in John chapter 15, verse 13, he explains what that means. He says, There is no greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. This reminds me also of the parable of the salt doll. 
ang manikang asin, the salt dal. The story goes, Once there was a salt dal that wanted to know who she was. She went around asking, but no one could tell her. Until one day, she saw the ocean and asked the water, Who am I? The ocean water replied, Come to me and you will know. As the salt doll stepped into the water, she began to dissolve. And before the rest of her fell into the ocean, she cried out and she said, Now I know who I am. Brothers and sisters, there are so many people in this world who live their lives not knowing who they are and what they live for. I cannot think of a more lonely life than a life without purpose. Some people get so obsessed about nothing but power and popularity for themselves or profit and gain. And later they wake up and realize how empty their lives have been. Someone once asked a friend who went to church very often in order to pray. The friend said, What do you gain from praying every day anyway? Are you not just wasting your time? The friend replied, You want to know what I gain? Honestly, nothing. But let me tell you what I have lost since I learned to pray. I've lost my fears and my insecurities. And I have also lost my arrogance and my selfishness. Now tell me, do you call that a loss? Jesus would call that a gain. That is what paradox is about. Let me now end with the best example of paradoxical language. The conclusion of the prayer of St. Francis. You know that prayer, Lord, make me an instrument of peace. The conclusion says, For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born again. Born again to it.